Hey folks and welcome to the show. We are live tonight making up somewhat for a missed opportunity on Monday because I was busy catching COVID at Compass Expo. Joining me this evening is Eric Holmgren who is responsible for the YouTube channel Eric Eric's Table Napoleonic Battles. Did I get that right? You did get that correct. So okay. greetings fellow wargamers and history buffs. And we're going to talk about the Labatai series tonight. Now, this was going to be like the first in a thing of things that went for November, and none of that's happening. So, but we're still doing this. So, uh, so Eric, let, let's start with with your history with Labatai. When did you start playing with that system, and 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 maybe give us an insight as to how long it's been around? Because it's been around for a very long time. It it has. It's coming up on about 50 years since the game series itself uh, got started. Um, I got started with it in 1984, which was when I bought the first game um, from Clash of Arms. It was the Labatai de Auerstadt. Um, and what attracted me to the game and the game system, you know, like a lot of high school kids at the time and, and college kids, you'd go to some local game conventions and uh there were a number of them i went to where they had beautiful napoleonic figures and and rows of armies and cavalry and all this stuff out on this big huge table and i'm like oh this is fantastic um the problem is i don't have the time energy or place to put all these little miniatures so when clash of arms came out with um their labatai at the time it was really unique in that the, the map looked really cool but the counters themselves had multiple colors on them. And so the colors on the counters then mimicked the historical uniforms at the time. So for me, it was like, I can play a miniatures game. I, it has the feeling of a miniatures game, but I can pack it all up and it, and it just fits in a little box. So that's what got me attracted to the game series um, back then. And then I were, you know, would acquire some of the other games as they came out. Um, and so I was principally getting the ones from Clash of Arms um, because that's what was carried at the local hobby store back in the 80s and 90s. Now, which one was the first one that you, you picked up or, and or played? So the first one I picked up and played was the Battle of Auerstadt. And so mm -hmm. that is set in 1806. It is the um, you know meeting engagement between Marshal de Vu's Third Corps um against about two-thirds of the entire prussian army and this is where devu defeats this huge force of prussians that technically outnumbered him um, but through a combination of antiquated you know uh tactical mechanisms plus the good fortune of you know both the duke of brunswick and General Schmidt now getting wounded, uh, fatally wounded at the nearly the same time, kind of knocked the whole Prussian um, uh, command system, which was rather, you know, jittery to begin with, uh, completely out of box. Yeah. And so Davu was able to pull off a victory that, you know, um, perhaps if circumstances hadn't been quite so favorable, would have ended in a, a draw or maybe a potential French defeat. Um, so that was the first one that I did. And then Clash of Arms came out. They had, I think, the Battle of Albuera and the Battle of Talavera and uh, and then the Battle of Eilau. And so I, I'm not sure if, what the exact order or, or mm -hmm. is for those. Um, and those were all great, you know, fun um, beer and pretzels, move and kill kinds of battles. Um, and then in the 90s, they came out with the series that kind of covers the 100-day campaign in Belgium. So Catreba, Ligny, uh, Mont Saint-Jean, and Wavre. Um, and then they've had some others after that. They've had the, um, what is it, uh, Orthez, Battle of Orthez, uh, Battle of Karuna, and the Battle of Lutzen. Um, so those are all ones that Clash of Arms has come out with. And mm -hmm. then about 10 years ago, Marshall Enterprise kind of got rebooted. Um, uh, Ed Wimble had invited the three principals of Marshall Enterprise, which is Jim Soto, Monty Matson, and Dennis Spores, um, out to a, a, a sort of um, event at Consim in Tempe. And uh, they were going to play then um ed's new game i think it was uh, 
um, uh, the Battle of Moscow um, that he put out. And so they had separate teams, the Marshall guys on one side and, and Ed and some other Labatai enthusiasts on the other. And so the Marshall guys had a lot of fun and they said, you know, we could, we could probably put together a few more games. We've got some ideas. We've got some stuff that we started working on way back in the seventies. Maybe we can find some of that stuff. And so since that, that event, uh, Marshall has put out um, some of the, the key skirmishes and battles that were part of um, Leipzig. They've put out uh, one covering Friedland, uh, Austerlitz, which they had done back in the 70s. So this was a, a remake of Austerlitz. They did Wagram, uh, Bautzen. They did four battles that are part of the Prussian 1806 campaigns like Jena, Auerstadt, uh, Saalfeld and Hall. And then um, recently, last year, they came out with one that covered the different battles uh, where the French were trying to take Berlin in 1813. So the Battle of Grossbieren and the Battle of Denowitz. And then this year, they came out with uh, the Battle of uh, Heilsburg, which is in 1807. That battle happened about four days before Friedland. So this is where the French are trying to come to grips with the Russians um, and uh, have this sort of meeting engagement there in Heilsburg. So they put out a fair number of, of games, usually one every year uh, for the last, you know, six, eight years here. So, so um, let's, let me ask about uh, sort of, so Labat is Labatai, the, the series is currently being, currently being published by both Clash of Arms and, Marshall Enterprises. Correct. I was kind of unique in the Napoleonic space in terms of covering those battles at the battalion level, right? Um, yes. Is there, other than the upcoming Glorian Empire, which is like now crowdfunding, which right. I'll give you a link for, but we're, this show's not about that, um, and, which looks great, by the way. Um, but other than that, is there anything else at the battalion level on the on the Napoleonic topics? There, There is. I um, had had gotten a game uh it's from a the the name of the series that he's calling it is fixed bayonets and so he's done two games that are kind of focused on the peninsula war he's got a battle of albuera which i had the chance to play at consim um you know just here in the fall and then he's got one that's on the battle of busaka um, and this is basically the, the French against, um, you know, British forces, uh, you know, Portuguese forces, etc. cetera. Um, and so it's an interesting series. He's he, the fellow who's the, the game designer um, sort of took some inspiration from La Bataille and he's then kind of melded it with some different elements from other games he likes, including some of the ones from the American Civil War. Um, so it's it's made for some interesting um, gameplay. Uh, I enjoyed playing it. And the game itself uh, can be uh, ordered through uh, like a print on demand type of service. So it's one of these ones where, you know, you go to the site and I think it's through the game crafters is mm. the outfit that he uses um, for it. And and you, you order it, and within about two weeks, you've got a game fresh, hot off the presses. Um, it usually costs a little bit more because, um, you know, you're not, it's not being a thousand of them made or 5,000 mm -hmm. of them being made. And so you get the volume of, of production. So it's a little bit more expensive, but um, they're nice games. Uh, I certainly enjoy it. And I kind of like um, the way some of the different elements that this fella has put in. Mm. And so that's the fixed bayonets. Um, uh, series. We'll have to look into that. Uh, aside from that, we've had a couple of folks point out some other battalion Napoleonic games, but certainly there's nothing that has like the scope of of having sort of one series that encompasses this many battles, right? Uh, the, the only thing comparable is the li Kevin Zucker's, of course, Library of Napoleonic Battles, which is at a completely different scale, has right. a completely different feel. Right. So, so the one thing that I think has given Labatai the greatest longevity of sorts is that it covers such a wide spectrum of battles. It's got 
all of the biggest battles that were out there. Um, and there's a, a large number of, of battles that people have um, sort of done their own research, created their own games. Uh, and so if you go to the labatai.us site, you can you know download PDFs mm -hmm. and you can then print out your own counters, the maps, the rules, um, and you can then play a whole variety of smaller battles that are probably too small to be treated by a publisher. Um, and, uh, and so there's, there's a whole variety of stuff out there. Um, and so that's, I think, one of the reasons why the Labatai system, uh, has, you know, as much popularity plus, mm -hmm. you know, there's a variety of rule sets. So whichever one that you want to do, if you're looking for something that's more geared towards team play, there's a rule set that works better for that. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more solitaire, there's a rule set that works a little bit better with that. And then if you you want something that's really you know granular and a lot of chrome, there's a rule set for that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to so, talk about that. Oh yeah, well, and that's one of the things that you know both people like, and it, it's a, both a, a benefit and a detraction from mm -hmm. the game series, the different rule sets. So our question here from Mike Anthony is uh, which Lavatai game has the smallest footprint? And I think uh, I, I think I knew this. I actually saw this on a table at Compass Expo last year, uh, the Vauchamp game that uh, was a magazine game. Correct. It would seem yeah. to be the smallest one, smaller than Quattro Bra, which is only one map, but it's still it's like three or four counter sheets. I know I just clipped it. So. <laughs> Yes. Um, so uh, Vauchamps was part of Against the Odds magazine. Mm -hmm. It was an annual, gosh, maybe five years ago, six years ago. I can't remember it precisely. Um, but yeah, it's a, a the production is very nice. And it's mm -hmm. got a great map and great counters. Um, it's dealing with one of Napoleon's battles in 1814 as he is getting mm -hmm. pushed back and he's bouncing back and forth trying to fight, you know, um, fight the allies as they're invading France. Mm -hmm. And so this is a particular engagement where he kind of catches um, the Prussians. They they get a little bit ahead of themselves and he gives them a, a bloody nose um, before the Russians can kind of come up and, and help them out. Um, so it's a fun, a fun little game. And uh, but yes, that's probably one of the smaller ones. Um, I would say the others, you know, the Battle of Albuera is a small map size as well doesn't take mm -hmm. up a lot of space la coruna um, has got to be pretty small as well la coruna is uh a i think it's just one maybe two maps at most it's not mm -hmm. very large and the number of of units is fairly small because you've got a smaller force of british what i like about that one is you get some british um you know ships of the line mm. that can sit uh off the coast and shell the french so you know you don't That's have fun for the british other... anyway it, it is it's the only it's the only upside the british have a lot of times in that one it's a pretty tough tough matchup for them i guess before we move on to talking about rules uh do, do you i have no experience with this system viva l'emperor oh um, yeah is that is that something you can you can give us a little bit of insight on yeah so the viva l'emperor series is more regimental scale Mm -hmm. um there's a couple of different games that are out if i'm thinking of the same one so they've got the battle of hanau mm -hmm. um which is in 1813 oh uh, this is didier ruiz series yep yep, yep, ah, yep okay this has created enormous confusion for several people yeah so to my knowledge that's that's the one that that's at least the one that that i'm talking about there mm -hmm. might be another one with a different name um but that particular one is regimental scale so you've got that He's got a set of, I think, four battles in Spain. Mm -hmm. And then there's another box set that's got four battles in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, that's a different scale than Lava Thai. And those are from Legion War Games for anybody interested in yeah. investigating yeah. that. So Yeah, and those are nice. Those the nice games. I played Very well too. regarded. Yeah. Um, they're they're we may... a faster moving kind of game since the mm -hmm. scale is different. So, um, so let's let's talk about the big thing that I think a lot of people think of when they they, they hear about Labatai. Now we're talking about you know generally people who are okay with heavier games, and I think it's safe to say that whatever Labatai rule set you're using, it's a relatively heavy game, right? But there are some that are more complicated than others. So let's kind of talk our way through the Labatai rules landscape here. 
sure. because it feels like there's a million rules. And I've since learned otherwise, but there's it feels like there's a million different rule sets, and everybody's got like this different synthesis of of uh, of those rule sets in their heads. So what 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 are the so I I think the rule sets that are available now are Marie Louise and Regs, which are downloadable from Clash of Arms, and then the fifth edition rules, which is in Lava Tide Mount Saint John. Correct, and then what? And then the premier rules, which is the Marshall Enterprises rule set. Correct. Okay. And, and then it, if you go back and you get an mm -hmm. older set, um, so if you were to buy a game from the from the nineties, you're going to have the third edition rules uh, from Clash of Arms, um, and then also in the nineties, late nineties, there's a Regs uh, twenty three. So the mm -hmm. regs that we think about now are the regs 30. Mm -hmm. So there's a regs 23. And for a while, some of the games that came out, like Katraba Second Edition and um, Lutzen, um, and even I think maybe Karuna, had a sort of hybrid rule set scenario all rolled into one that relied a lot on the sort of regs 23 concepts, mm -hmm. which eventually evolved into the full blown regs. And then the Marie Louise is sort of the uh, simpler version of it. So the way I try to look at it is um, how it is that you're going to be playing the game and what sort of things that you are looking for um, for your gameplay. Uh, each rule set serves a better function uh, for one type of play than another. So when I go to Consim and we're playing a big game and we've got you know, four or five people on each side, say it's Austerlitz. Um, you know, you've got all kinds of people doing stuff. We can't have it where we've got chip pulls because everyone's sitting around twiddling their thumbs while one guy is doing something down at the end. So for a big team type of uh, gameplay face-to-face, -face, the premier rules work really well. Also, for teaching new people how the game works. I find that the premier rules work very well. Um, the reason why uh, it doesn't have command control, so you don't have to worry about any of those sort of mechanics. You have a lot of freedom where you move your units. Um, and it's a little simpler with the um, you know, organizations of, of how it deals with skirmishers or some of the other different formations. So it's a little bit pared down, easier to digest, easier to learn, and easier to get started. But the general sequence of how the game works and the general sequence of how combat works and the die rolls and all that stuff carries over to all the other rule sets. So uh, if you can kind of get that one down, um, then it's pretty easier to use that as a springboard to go to any others that you want. And you can download um, that rule set as well, right? Yep, you can download that directly from the uh, Marshall Enterprise. So it's labatai.me website, and they've got uh, that listed there, as well as their different charts that they use uh, for combat, fire combat, and melee combat. So um, that's that's a good one for team play, and that's a good one for kind of getting somebody started with it and not kind of overwhelming them with the complexity. And also if you're looking for like a fast game, you know, you've only got one afternoon um, to, to set up and play something um, that's a faster game system rule system to kind of go through. It doesn't have as much uh, detail to it that would kind of slow down the gameplay. Um, and then now if we want to get into the game systems or the rules that have, a more complexity, more depth. Now you're looking at, say, the fifth edition rules um, or the Marie Louis rules that have the command control system and the chip pull mechanism that then um, adds a, a different level to the game. And for a lot of folks, um, you know, we like the command control because it, to a certain extent, mimics then both the strengths of some armies and some army historical command structures and then highlights the brittleness or the failures or the or the deficiencies of others. And so we can see that pretty clearly in some of the different conflicts early in the Napoleonic period where Napoleon and his core commanders are able to do more, move more, have greater ability 
while their various allies, uh, not their allies, but their various opponents are hindered because of their sort of clunky command structure. So with the with a game system that has that sort of command control in it, you can then factor that in, and then you you tend to get things happening in a way that uh, is is closer to sort of what you would expect historically um, with how the people you know and the and the units are behaving. Um, the downside with that is, of course, there is you know with that extra level of detail, it slows down things a little bit with how you have things organized and and how things are happening. Um, and so for, for team play, the fifth edition is probably the best with that sort of command control system. Um, and that's what I'd used, and that's what you would use if you're playing the, the new Mont Saint-Jean game. Um, it's got the fifth edition, and we had done a big game. I think we had about, you know, at one time we had seven people uh, playing Mont Saint-Jean at uh, Consim uh, there in September. So is, is it correct to say that regardless, I I go grab a Clash of Arms uh, Lavatai game from 1992. Is it fair to say that I can take any of those previous games and play them with any rule set that I want? Yes, it is fair to say that. And it's because of the, uh, how would you say, uh, heroic efforts of a number of Lavatai fans who have labored <laughs> to try to bring um, the concepts of the command control system or some of the other different rule sets like the Marie Louise and the, and the Regs 30 and come up with ways of how you would then do that with games that were published in the in the 80s or not. And so if you go to the labatai.us website and you want to find the title of one of the games that you have, and maybe it's Albuera, which was published back in the you know uh, mid 1980s. You click on that, and you'll see that someone has written up. Okay, this is the scenario. It's very similar, but here's you know what the army commander has, and this is the range, and this is so it's got some of the different rule command control overlay stuff has already been answered for you. So you don't have to think about that. You can just print it out, and then you can go and play your game using you know, a more up-to-date or more modern rule set, um, but you still have the maps and counters um, from from that game that date back, you know, 30, 40 years. So that's interesting to me that there aren't, and I, I, I guess I understand that, that, you know, work has had to have gone into that, but it's interesting that you can basically not have fundamental component compatibility issues regardless yeah, of the I mean, rules that you're using. Yeah, and this is, I think, one of the things that is has why Labatai has stuck around is the 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 scale of the of the combat battalion level. You've got companies of uh, of artillery. Um, you've got squadrons or regiments of cavalry. You know, all of that stayed the same. The the mechanism for your melee and your morale and increments and movement and all of that is is the same all across the board. Um, and you could, you could play the game with whatever rules are in the box, you know, kind of thing. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. But if you wanted to use a more up-to-date, uh, game for it, um, there's some folks who have done a great job, um, updating some of the different, uh, older rule sets. Um, so that way from the scenario point of view, you know, how many command points you have and which leaders are in charge of what. Um, and in some cases, you will have to make your own counter um, because some of the earlier games, they didn't bother to have necessarily leaders for each a brigade of cavalry or for some of the different, um, you know, organizations. Um, and you have to think about it, too. When these guys were making these games back in the 70s and 80s, there was no Google. There was no Internet. <laughs> they're just going down to the library and they're trying to do the research. And so in some cases when we've seen, okay, well, this is what you, this is what you published back in the eighties. And then here's the updated version of it. And wow, the order of battle is different or some of these different elements are different. And uh, the comment from Dennis Spores when I was chatting with him about one of the games that I was helping him play test was, you know, the Soviet union collapsed and now, and the, and the Germans reunited. And now we have access 
to all this material and archives that we didn't have before and we can google stuff and so therefore yeah we can we can come up with some updated stuff as a result of new scholarship um but yeah it's it's kind of cool the changes that have happened over time too so so what um, somebody and somebody mentioned I forget who who said there is uh, looking at the Marie Louise rules there is only twenty six pages of those rules uh, game specific rules aside so so what though are the sort of mechanical the, the signature mechanical aspects other than the uniform scale of Labatai across all these different rule sets so. The, the main mechanics that have held true across all the rule sets is that you have some type of element with a charge, you've got some type of fire combat, some types of assault or melee combat. And then the one thing that is true across all the boards is you've got this whole issue of morale, the morale of the units, and the morale of the division or the morale of the core. Um, and so, at, which I think is true with most Napoleonic uh, combat is really... A lot of times it's not the case where they're suffering a lot of fire combat. It's not like what we think about um, with other wars where there's huge losses due to, to fire combat. But it's really a case where this unit loses cohesion and everyone runs backwards and says, we're out of here. Or the British, you know, turn around and, and come at you with their, with their, um, their bayonets and you head out. So... The main thing that I would say that kind of glues everything together is this idea of the morale quality for each individual battalion and then how those losses suffered over time then uh, affect the unit's um, ability to perform as the battle goes on or as their formation suffers losses. Um, so that's pretty coherent through all of the rule sets. So you've got uh, you've got like a local group by you that plays regularly, right? So, so. I uh, I have um, so what happened was uh, the reason I have my channel um, and the reason why you you're chatting with me is I had uh, I teach fencing and I teach archery and so I'd gotten a you know a Labatai game and I watched Stuka Joe and I love Stuka Joe and and so when, I'm like well you know we I could. Yeah, I'm like I could, I could, I could do a little video. So I did a little video, and I think at the time it was on uh, the Clash of Arms Dresden game. And for whatever reason, it must have showed up in Ed Wimble's feed. And so he sends me a note, and he's like, "You know, we're there's a conference in Tempe, Arizona. Where you want to come out?" And and I'm like, "Cool." So I went to Consim, and uh, they were play testing. Uh, Marshall Enterprises uh, Austerlitz. So I'm there and I'm filming people and talking to people and whatever else, and they don't know who I am. And uh, and one of the fellows who was there at the table had to leave. And so they said, well, Eric, you we want to take over uh, this, this core, Soul's core? And I'm like, sure. And so I sat down, I started playing and um, got to know the guys from Marshall Enterprise. And then when they found out that I'm from Southern California, a number of them live in Southern California and they were looking to find somebody that they could do some play testing with. And so Jim Soto lives just about 40 miles north of me in LA. And so we started then getting together every week to play test um, whatever the new title that they were working on. And so I helped them quite a bit. The first one they helped them play test with was the um the the series of prussian uh, battles that they did from 1806 and then everyone after that i have helped them with um uh with play testing um and with you know different concepts and ideas and then ed wimble um had me help out with play testing the mont saint jean using the fifth edition rules um in 2019 and so from time to time they'll send me stuff hey could you proofread lisa could you look at this um, and I'll give them some my feedback on it. And so that's been a lot of fun. But then it gave me an uh, opportunity to to have stuff to post and do on my YouTube channel. And um, and so I it's not just La Bataille that I do, but that's principally what I do. Um, but then what happened was when the pandemic hit, well, suddenly everything is like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and so it was it was rather amusing 
Um, but one of my friends, uh, Albert Smith, who's out in, in Dallas, who I met at Consim, we're both sitting around bored and, and not knowing what's going on and trying to find something to cheer us up. And at the time, Marshall was had a game that they wanted us to help play test that was then going to be part of their Berlin series. So he prints out a copy of the map and counters, and I print out a copy of the map, and we're at home, and I've got my iPad, and on Skype, we are playing the game <laughs> with each other. And he says, you know, this would be a lot easier, Eric, if you played Vassal. And I'm like, what's Vassal? And he's like, oh, let me show you. Oh, dear. <laughs> and so uh, that then spawned um, some terrific Vassal games. So in 2021, we had a six-person Vassal game of the Battle of Moscow, which ran for about 10 months. Um, we got together every Sunday night, with a few exceptions, and we played uh, through uh, a, a fair chunk of, of the game. And then at the same time, uh, Ed Wimble asked us if we would help play test a Vassal version of the Dresden module, which we did. So we did that in 2021, and that was, I think, a five-player game. Um, and so then I was live streaming those, and I didn't know anything about live streaming, but one of my fencing coach of friends who's about 30 years younger than me says, you know, coach, you know, there's this thing called live streaming. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so then I started live streaming stuff. So I've got this whole, you know, collection of, of videos if people want to go. And, and as I say, you know, either you're suffering from insomnia or you want to see how the sausage is made, you can watch, you know, a week after week after week of us going through and playing a turn after turn after turn of some of these different games. And uh, right now, we're doing a vassal on Monday nights of the Battle of Lini. So this is using the second edition map encounters, but we're playing using the premier rules, um, which are the Marshall Enterprise rules, but it's a clash of arms game. It doesn't matter. Um, and then on Sundays, I just started a Battle of Brandywine, which is from the Battles of the Age of Reason game series that Clash of Arms put out. About 20 years ago. And so that's using a different rule set, but a lot of things are surprisingly similar. Um, and so, yeah, so those are some of the different things that I do. So I have some in-person gaming, but I'm doing a lot more stuff on Vassal and it's a lot of fun. I really so enjoy is, it. Is there as, outside of like large convention games, because I understand that the circumstances just may be different there where you have eight, 10 people playing. Um, is there like a preferred rule set that you have for your local games and or vassal games? Yeah. So the one that we currently are finding that we enjoy best is the premier rules from Marshall Enterprise. And that's simply because um, it tends to play faster. So one of our colleagues who's playing the, the Linny game with us, for example, he lives out in South Carolina. So, and I'm in Southern California, so we got a three hour time difference. Um, and then our other friend is in Dallas. And so um, we can't be playing, you know, we want to try to get through a turn or we want to try to get through something in, you know, uh, an hour and a half, two hours. And so the premier tends to play faster and work a little quicker that way. So we can kind of get through a turn or a big chunk of something um, in, in a setting. Um, and so that's what we're doing. but. I personally, I like the fifth edition rules. I do like the command control element. And I think it's really important for capturing the peculiarities of the, of the different armies and army structures. And while it's, it's all very well and good to play the games using, you know, not having the command control, um, I think you get a better sense of what's going on when you have that element in play. And so the fifth edition um, is after the premiere would be my my second uh, go to rule set. Okay, I feel like I see folks playing Marie Louise more, but but I really my experience is seeing other people play it at conventions, right? Um, yeah, and so, the Marie, so the so the Marie Louise rule and the regs rules are great for solitaire, and they're great for maybe just face to face. Two, two guys playing mm -hmm. um the because of the chit pool mechanism the maria louise rules uh lend a certain amount of of chaos to things um where you know 
something gets drawn and then you're moving stuff. So if it's just you doing uh, the, you're just playing it solitaire, it adds some drama to it just with what gets pulled. Um, and if you're just playing one other guy, um, the chit pull system works pretty well uh, for that. But for like a team game, um, it, it doesn't quite lend itself the same. You'd have to come up with something like, well, as soon as we pull a French chit, all the French players go. Or as soon as we pull, you know, an allied mm. chit, all the allied players go kind of a thing. And then it kind of loses the the element of of the chaos of the chit getting pulled. And then it things get pulled out of order. So you wanted to do a cavalry charge, um, but that chit didn't get pulled. And instead, mm -hmm. you've got your infantry that gets pulled. And you're like, I was waiting for the cavalry to break through before I go. And now everything's out of order, um, which is a great a great way of kind of you know, simulating the, the chaos of the courier didn't get there on time or whatever. Um, but, uh, uh, but for a larger type of a team game, it doesn't, it doesn't lend itself quite as well to that, but it does make for a fun, a more entertaining solitaire type of game. So there is, I, I assume there is pretty good vassal support for Labatai, uh, modules for basically everything. So for, most of the stuff that Clash of Arms has put out recently, there are scenarios and modules out there. Um, for some of the older stuff, there's maybe one or two. Um, and then for the uh, more recent um, uh, Marshall Enterprise games, there's not as much out there. And part of it is just because the Marshall guys aren't... Um, they weren't quite as savvy or aware of some of the different things with Vassal. So I've been trying to chat with them and, and, uh, and educate them on some of the different opportunities available to get their game out or to have more people be aware of it or play it on Vassal. Um, so that's a kind of a work in progress. Um, but usually the Marshall, uh, not the uh, Clash of Arms stuff, there's a fair amount of, of games that are out there from Clash of Arms. Um, so you can usually... Anything that comes out, usually within a couple of years, there'll be a Vassal module for it. And your folks, are you're typically playing, sounds like you're playing live on Vassal, not by mail, right? Yeah, we are playing live. So what we, what we did was um, in early 2021, um, there was a concern, are there going to be any game conventions this year? And the Marshall Enterprise guys were worried because they delayed one of their publications in 2020 and they were thinking well are we is there going to be a game convention and so i'd seen that i think it's great battles of the american civil war has a discord site and mm -hmm. they did maybe it was in january or february of 2021 they did a virtual uh convention mm -hmm. and people were able to play and connect on discord and chat with each other and then post their results and play games now, this is great battles or great campaigns. I'm not sure which one it is. It's one of it's, the great ones. I think <laughs> it's it, great. Yeah, whatever it yeah. is, it's great. <laughs> it's great, um, and it's no, an think, American Civil War. Yeah, but yeah, it's, that's you so, know maybe the great battles folks did this too. But I know the great campaigns folks did it when when our offensive got canceled at the last minute. So yeah, yeah, they did and a virtual event which was extremely well attended. By the way, they had like sixty or eighty people in that thing. Yeah, and point. so and so that inspired me. So then I created a Lava Thai Discord server. Um, Did you need to send me the link to, to? Apparently, oh, I'd be happy to. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, and for the same purpose. And so mm -hmm. then we had, I, I don't, we probably have, uh, you know, uh, a little less than a hundred people who signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And we then are able, people are able to answer questions, and we can post stuff. But basically, what we'd been doing you during those like team vassal games is we use discord and it works out really nice because unlike say with zoom or something like that where someone has to assign you to a different room um with discord you can say okay you and i are sitting opposite each other if we were sitting at the table you and i would have say the southern wing of the armies mm -hmm. and so you and i are going to move you're going to watch what i'm moving where i'm going to roll the dice i'm shooting at you making morale checks etc but if we're all in the same room i'm trying to talk to you and everyone else is talking and the, I, we can't hear anything mm -hmm. in discord so with discord we could go into ah, okay i'll see you in game room three 
you and I can then go down to game room three and the other guys who are in the center are in game room two and somebody else is in game room one. And so we're all having our own conversations. We're all doing our dice rolls and everything else. And then when our 10 minutes is up or whatever our time is, then we all meet back up and we're ready then to pull the chit for the next action or whatnot. So it made it a great way for us to have a six player game virtually um, using Discord and using Vassal. And then you can see what your opponent is moving. It's all in real time. So it was very cool. That's cool. Yeah. So um, Mark is asking, I know Mark has just taken his first dive into Lava Tide very recently. Yes. Um, and, and when Mark dives, Mark dives, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. he is not messing around. <laughs> so so he's asking what's on deck, either from Marshall or from Clash of Arms or, or both. So from Clash of Arms, uh, to my knowledge, the next title uh, would be the Battle of Fuentes de Orono, mm. which is another one that's there in the peninsula. Um, I think it is, I can't remember. I know it's Wellington, and I'm not sure if it's Messina uh, or Marmo. It's one of the French uh, marshals. Um, and so that's one that, to my knowledge, is the next one that Clash of Enterprise has on tap. Um, for Marshall Enterprise, they haven't announced uh, what they're going to do yet. And I'm not sure if they've if they figured out exactly which title, or which battle they're going to take on. Um, they'd had a little bit of an issue in production with this last edition that they, this last game that they put out, where they had some issues with the printer had cut the map incorrectly. Mm, yeah. So things weren't lining up. And so they've been dealing with getting all that done, sending out new maps to everybody worldwide that had ordered the game. And uh, so that's kind of delayed um, perhaps where they might be already thinking about what mm. they're going to do. But usually, even if I know what it is, I'm not at liberty to say it until they sure. announce it. And they usually do that in the spring um, mm. or the late or the summer there before they ha debut it at the um, Consum in, in uh, Tempe. And the only reason I knew about the map problem was because of your channel. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that they're fixing that, whatever that problem was. Yeah, um, it, it basically, you know, it's one of those things that uh, going to happen. Uh, Problems yeah, happen. It, it happens Perfect from time point. to time. Yeah. So but the, the, the good thing is that they they really do their best to try to, you know, they only print Marshall only makes 400 copies of their games. And it's because they're not a game company. Right. And mm -hmm. they're just pulling it all together in their garage and shipping it out so they don't have a warehouse and they don't want to you know the guys all have real jobs <laughs> mm -hmm. um and so therefore they don't they don't want to be um you know sending stuff out and so if they figure okay we'll sell 400 and then that's it um and so but even then they they want to make sure that uh, what they do and what they send out is uh, something that people are going to appreciate and uh, and enjoy so um that's interesting. Fuentes de Nero is is a fairly big battle, as I recall, um, and and that wasn't one. I know they've done a bunch in the Peninsula War of, of, of battles that I know very little about, to be honest. Um, is this one? This is a new one that Lob the the series has not covered previously, right? Yes. Yeah. Fuentes de Orono has not been covered by uh, either Clash of Arms or Martial Enterprises. So mm -hmm. this would be a, a newer one. And I see, I get this all the time, Mont Saint-Jean, Mont Saint-Jean. My apologies, Andrew and everyone else. Well, um, well we're not actually I French here, so. I know, I normally get, I, that, uh, trust me, when I had done a, 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 a video on Ligny, I'd called it Ligny. Oh my gosh, the comments in the, in the you know, YouTube were like, what? It's pronounced this way. So needless to say, I I'm to from Ohio. Something. You'd be amazed at the stuff I can mispronounce. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I I frequently butcher, you know, the names of uh, of uh, of folks, um, you know, whether it's French marshals or Russians or whatever else. Um, so my apologies to anybody out there. To who, the French. Yes. For, with whom we have offended. Indeed. Indeed. So, that's OK. Are you originally from Southern California? I am, um, but I had the great pr privilege of traveling a fair amount. Um, and in fact, when I was in high school, I uh, had a summer exchange program in Germany 
Um, so I was there in the Westphalia area. And if I wasn't speaking German, all of my German friends were speaking English with an English accent. Um, so I must have picked up on some of that. And then, um, uh, you know, I had a chance to, to travel around quite a bit in college as well. So this is one of the things that had gotten me interested in the Napoleonics period um, was having, you know, we went to Waterloo, uh, to Battlefield. We were in the, the Invalides in Paris and saw all the military history stuff. And of course, Napoleon's tomb. So those sort of things then, you know, uh, piqued my interest in the, uh, in the time period, in the era. So given, I mean, the interest in the, in the era seems completely reasonable, obviously. Um, but what, what is it about the Labatai series specifically that kind of calls to you inside, you know, above and beyond your interest in the period? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, one of the reasons why I've been playing it for as long as I have is for a very simple reason. Um, I can remember the rules. So my friends and I, back in high school and college, we loved to play the big monster games. We would play, you know, Pacific War and, you know, Third Reich and all the different Avalon Hill stuff, World in Flames, the Euro, 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 you know, Euro games, you know, Dragnak Osteen and, and Fall of France, I, huge big things that you'd set up and they'd sit on your mother's dinner, you know, dinner table for months on end as we slowly went through it. Well, as we started to move away, um, and had less time and had family and whatever else, we'd like, okay, instead of seeing each other twice a week to play a game, now we're seeing each other twice a year to play a game. And we've only got maybe a weekend or, you know, a day to play. So we're like, well, what can we play? Well, none of the big games that we can set up. And a lot of other things, we've forgotten the rules. So, okay, hey, let's play La Bataille. And here's a little scenario from whatever game so you don't have to play all of waterloo we can just play the attack on hogma um we don't have to play all of this we can just play this smaller scenario and we my friend robert and i we both remembered the rules enough that we could um uh we could then you know play the pick up the game and play it without having to um you know spend endless hours you know, trying to read through the rule books and, and learn what it was. So that's one of the reasons why I have been playing it for as long as I have. Um, but the other thing that appeals to me is sort of the, the drama and the narrative of the game. So you can really get a sense of here's your line and here you're making the attack and, you know, stuff is being repulsed or you're breaking through and you have these heroic moments where, you know, the intervention of, of a marshal and the plus six on the die roll or whatever else then helps, you know, save, you know, the day or helps turn the battle, you know, or, or this little element in your favor. Um, so it's got these different elements of drama and narrative that um, make it appealing. And it gives you... Uh, you can lot. still hear me, right? Oh, okay, yeah, I can. You just okay, good. for a second. Yeah. No, I'm Freaking having... Out. I had... Don't don't buy AMD hardware, folks. Um, I'll try and fix this. But. That's okay. That's okay. I'll 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 cover the rest of the show for you if need be. <laughs> as long as you can hear me, it should be okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, but yeah. So so those elements make it make it a lot of fun, and it's it's just a it's a really a, a fun game, um, and it has a lot of drama and a lot of tension to it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what, that's one of the reasons why I keep playing it after all these years, other than just, you know, learning a new rule set can be a challenge. So <laughs> I think that's completely understandable. Um, I, I was telling somebody, uh, this might've been at Compass Expo actually, um, you know, between bouts of getting COVID, uh, I was telling, uh, somebody that, uh, a, a lot of folks, as they get older, their lives, you know, accrete more responsibilities and all that. They find their ability to deal with more complicated games, bigger games to be, you know, they, they want simpler games. They want smaller games. They want faster games. And I've found for me, I, I'm kind of moving in the opposite direction, uh, but I'm, I'm really trying hard to deal with fewer games. Right. Right. And not just learn absolutely every single monster game system that's floating around. So 
Well, and that's one of the reasons, too, why I kind of focused in on the Napoleonic era. I do play, you know, other eras of games. Mm -hmm. I do play, you know, World War II games and things like that. Um, but there's there's plenty of material to cover in the Napoleonic era. There's plenty of games that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, But the challenge is with a lot of the different monster games, having a, uh, an opponent or having someone that you can get together with on a regular basis to mm -hmm. actually play it. And um, so until my friend retires and we can both move into the retirement home and, uh, and set up something in the bingo room or whatnot. <laughs> Obviously we're going to have to talk to Bill Thomas about the war gamers retirement home. There That's you a go. Conversation that we'll have, we'll have with Bill at a later time. It's like, Bill, you, this is really an opportunity for you here. I got to tell you. There you go. There you go. So, um, so if, if somebody is like, Hey, I'm interested in, in Lava Thai, where, what resources are available aside from your channel, which I would personally consider probably the number one resource for Lava Thai material on certainly on YouTube. Um, there's another channel that was mentioned that, uh, I forget who that was that did some Lava Thai instructional videos way back, but you're, you're cranking content out on a regular basis. Right. So, uh, there's a, a fella named Jeff Capuano. Mm -hmm. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, who had a, he, he's got a YouTube channel. He hasn't been very active in mm -hmm. the last year and a half or so, but he had some very nice content on La Bataille. Um, and so he's got a few good videos out there that you could check out for that. But I don't think he's done anything recently um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on La Bataille or, or any other game. Um, as far as resources go, probably the the best place would go to would be the consim forum mm. uh, so uh there if you go to i think it's individual board games and then you go to gunpowered era and then you go to napoleonic you can then go and you'll find labatai dot, dot 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 series and there's people there that are posting all the time. Ed Wimble's usually there to answer questions. The guys from ME are usually there to answer questions. And there's people that post after action reports. And there's people that post, you know, um, you know, different uh, photos of, of games they've played. Um, so that's, that's a really good place to go to get, uh, you know, answers if you've got questions on um, what to do. Um, I have on my, on my channel... I put together as like a player aid, a uh, sequence of play cards mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, basically Stuka Joe had pioneered that concept. So I did a series of those for the premier rules. And then I recently posted ones for the fifth edition rules. And so I've got those posted on, on board game geek. Um, and so that would be a place that people could go if they're interested in learning those two rule sets, mm -hmm. um, they could print that out and that's going to kind of help them guide them through the basics until they kind of get the flow for how the game works. Mm -hmm. And then is the discord server generally open to new folks? Or you got to like know somebody who knows somebody or what? Nope, no. So the discord server. So I have like an announcement for the discord server that I did on my, on my YouTube channel, gosh, probably almost two years ago now. Um, and so the, the link that's there, of course, discord, the link only lasts for seven days. Mm -hmm. So I will get people who watch the video and then they'll write down, Hey, can you send me an invite? Yeah. And then I will reply back with the current, yeah. um, you know, and you have to day. do it that way or you'll get spammers in there and yeah. you, your discord yeah. server will swiftly be overrun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're welcome to have more people come and do stuff. We do have a sort of a rule section there where people can post stuff there about rules for, you know, question about the fifth edition rules or premier or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also a section there. If people are looking for players, um, they can then try to find people that they can connect with via vassal. Um, mm -hmm. And I've become more of a vassal evangelist um, since the pandemic. Um, so I'm probably going to put together some videos on kind of, you know, how to navigate vassal um for That'd the be super top. valuable because yeah, every yeah. module is different right um there's a lot of it is similar um but it, it does take a little bit of getting used to and i think the first time <laughs> first couple of times i played vassal with with albert i was about ready to pull what few hairs i had out of my head because i'm like it's taking me 40 clicks and all this stuff to try mm -hmm. to do what would only take me one tweezer move to do mm -hmm. um, but once you get used to it you kind of know some of the different shortcuts 
it's it it's uh it, it goes fairly fairly quickly mm -hmm. but just mm -hmm. like anything else kind of getting used to it was a little bit of a trick now i think uh, we're being asked again so let me, uh, i think i know what the answer is at this point if if there is a specific rule set that you're going to recommend to a new levitai player it's going to be the premier set the premier it would be set. the premier set um so yeah. levitai.me that can be downloaded from the marshall enterprises website yep and that's that's the one that I would say for for beginners would be a good one. The second one, if you want to have the command control, um, would either be the Marie Louise rules um, or the fifth edition rules. Um, and mm -hmm. either of those are pretty um, you know pretty easy to kind of digest and go through. And they just add that extra level of uh, complexity to things. Um, so the Marie Louise and the regs are both chip pull, correct? That's correct. Okay. And, and then, the fifth edition has an element of chit pull as well. Okay. But the premier is the French go and then the allies go and the French mm. go and the allies go. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you move and then I move and, and we go back and forth between the two while with regs, Marie Louise and fifth edition, you have the chit pull mechanism. So you could potentially get two back to back moves mm -hmm. um, or you could get, you know, multiple chits kind of coming up in your favor um, in any given uh, situation or any given turn. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Uh, and yeah, and we'll mention this, that uh, check out Eric's channel. It is linked in the video description. So for anybody not already subscribed, uh, what are you doing? Go, go take exactly. care of that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that my channel membership will grow so I won't just be a battalion. I can become so you guys could play uh Lavatai in Cancun, right? <laughs> oh yes, you know, exactly. The, the big YouTube bucks. <laughs> tens of dollars, tens, tens of dollars, of dollars. Are coming in. Oh, yeah. I'm not so. really worried about that. <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody, nobody not in this space is doing this for the money, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. my that's my what is it called? Uh OnlyFans page? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Oh god. <laughs> no, no, no. We we we're not talking about that. We don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> it's it's bad enough when I've got loose cannon Dan on Tuesday nights. So I'm like, oh, oh yes. Again. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Appreciate that. You've cost me another 11 cents. Um, oh, so this yeah. is a thing that, like, I mean, this is one of the things that kept me away from Labatai for a long time. Is this, like, the rules landscape from the outside seems like kind of a mess, right? I mean, it's like, you don't know what rules do what. Um, which rules are the easiest? I mean, if you could just go by page count, Marie Louise has, I believe, the lowest page count. Um, but you know, that's the ser the set I've been looking at. Now, no, I've changed my mind. I'm going to start looking at the premier rules. Um, but it's not a particular 29 pages or not. It's it's not a particularly simple rule set. So, so I think, I mean, I feel like there's there's a lot of like uh, community generated confusion about that. Um, yeah, and this is this is a common complaint about the series and about the different rules. And um, the way I try to look at it is I can remember back in the day with a lot of the different Avalon Hill games or SPI games, you would have, okay, here's the beginner's rule set. So the first, you know, 15 pages of the rule book were the beginning rules. And then they'd have now, here's the intermediate rules. And you'd flip it. And then you're adding whatever new mm -hmm. complex stuff to it. And then a few pages later, here's the advanced rules. And it's got then all kinds of stuff that's adding then more layers of complexity um, or historical, you know, perspective to the gameplay. Um, with the Labatai system, um, there you have to think of each rule set almost being similar to that. So they have a similar base structure with the uh, idea of the cavalry charges and the movement and the fire combat and the assault and then the different recovery phase. So a lot of it's very similar from one to the next to the next. And I didn't realize how close it was until I was doing the sequence of play cards. I basically took the sequence of play cards I'd done a year ago for the premiere and started working on it for the fifth edition. I'm like, this is almost all the same. There's only one card that I actually actually switched the order of. Um, obviously, some of the there's slight differences, but there really is a lot of uh, continuity between the two. Um, and so it's when you kind of get into it and you're kind of looking at it, you can see, okay, 
the 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 organization and the, and the basic concepts carry over throughout all of them and it's really what it is that you're planning on doing mm-hmm. and so that's why i say if you're looking for beer and pretzels fast team stuff premiere if you're looking for something that's got that extra layer of complexity fifth edition or marie louise and if you're looking for super advanced you know more complicated more chrome then it's regs 30 and so that would be the way to kind of structure it and so it depends on what kind of person you are and what kind of mm-hmm. you know game environment you're going to be in um to see which rule set is going to be uh, a good fit for you and there's nothing stopping you from learning a different one uh, because as i said there's not that much difference between them on a lot of the fundamental um, mm-hmm. aspects. So um, I guess let me ask to kind of to help close us out here. We have, we've got, I think it sounds like some interest in Lava Thai based on what I'm seeing in the chat. So f- aside from the rules set that one might choose, um, which of the games that's currently available is the best fit for a new uh, player of Lava Thai to try to learn the game? Is yeah, it that's... Butter that's- that's a great question. Uh, Quattro Bob would be one of the first ones I would recommend because it is a smaller battle. It's just one map um, and it's kind of a meeting engagement and you've got some interesting things happening. You've got the Duke of Wellington there. You've got some other famous uh, you know, generals and units that are showing up. Um, so that would be a good one to, to consider. And that's available from Clash of Arms. Plus you could find you know, used versions of it out there mm-hmm. on Board Game Geek or eBay or whatnot. Pretty inexpensively, too. I yeah, imagine. yeah, and it's the least expensive. Um, but the other thing that's worth noting is that even, so whether it's the monstrous games, the larger games, like Mont Saint-Jean, Mont Saint-Jean, sorry, um, Dresden, Moscow. Mm-hmm. Those um, are or big. Even, Dresden those and are Mo- bigger Mo- ones. are huge. But all of them have a small scenario. So they have one that only takes like one map and it has a handful of units. And so if you wanted to play something uh, just in the course of an afternoon or a couple of evenings, you've got a scenario that just deals with a small segment of the battlefield um, and you don't have to set up the whole kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. Um, You can kind of get your feet wet, dabble with it. And I would, I would encourage anybody if you have some of the larger games to start off with, you know, one of the early scenarios, most of them are dealing with a small section of the battlefield and some critical, um, you know, or famous assault. And um, and that would be a good way to kind of get your feet wet, learning the mechanics and some of the basics before taking on like the entire grand battle kind of a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess I have one more question that I just thought of, and, and I should sure. have thought of this weeks ago, actually. How do you organize your counters for lava tile? Because I think I think I've landed on using baggies by like lot larger level formation, like say by regiment or division. So I have counter trays, mm-hmm. and usually with all the lava tie games, certainly all the ones that have come out in the last couple of decades, they have an order of battle chart. Yeah. So yes. I usually put all my uh, units out on the order of battle chart where mm-hmm. they're supposed to be, and then I usually have there's a with a with a counter tray you usually have a row with maybe four or five little slots um and so i will then have all the leaders and artillery and maybe core you know uh cavalry in one slot and then the next mm-hmm. one down's got the first division and then the next one's got the second division and the next one's got the third division and so i can usually get most of the french army in one you know, counter tray, and then I can get mm-hmm. most of the yeah, allied army in another counter tray. And it's kind of organized like that. And then when I want to play, it's pretty easy for me to find the stuff and just go, okay, here's the first core, or here's the sixth core. And I can just kind of pull the stuff out, put it on the on the order of battle chart, and I'm ready to go. Okay, that because that is basically exactly what I landed on in the middle of clipping uh, Quattro Bra, actually. Um, the the uh, John Longshore, thank you very much, um, was uh, just, you know, go by the org, the org chart, right? You get this yeah. huge color, very fancy, actually, um, uh, sort of order of battle display. Just use that to, to as the basis of the counter organization, and that's what I did. Um, yeah. There wouldn't be War of 1812 Lava Tie games, but uh, are there, is that covered by BAR? 
I so think... War of eighteen twelve, you're you're talking about like the the, the there's battles in uh, the United States, and, you know, there outside of Baltimore, um, you know, uh, as the British are coming to attack Washington D.C. Um, there's some battles that are happening up in uh, Canada where we're making failed attempts to can conquer Canada. Um, and of course, there's the Battle of New Orleans, which is, I think, mm -hmm. in 1815. Right. And it's got um, a soundtrack and everything. It does. Yeah. And you should watch the Lego version of it where the oh, Legos yes. are marching around. That's hilarious. Um, but uh, up there, I, I've got a running joke with Jim Soto, who's one of the designers from Marshall Enterprise. I'm like, when are we going to do the Battle of New Orleans? You and I need to go on a trip to do some research in New Orleans and spend a week there in the French Quarter. Um, you know, and the research, it's research. Right, so right. Yeah, you expense that out too. Yeah, yeah. And so there's, uh, right now there's, uh, it might be something that might get done in some point in the future. At least he and I have always joked about it. But I don't think there's any current um, battles. And in large part, it's because most of the battles that are happening in the Americas, whether they're happening in North America with the War of 1812, or they're happening down in South America with the different wars of liberation, where the South Americans are fighting against the Spanish to get their, their freedom. Um, it's They're still using the same sort of Napoleonic tactics. They've got all the same weaponry, whatever else. But you're dealing with an army of a thousand men. Mm -hmm. Well, gosh, that's nothing. That's like, you know, a regiment. In, um, Lob a tie postcard game. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You pass that on to the folks at Marshall Enterprises and Clash of Arms. There you go. Take a 10 percent cut. Uh, I can answer this one actually. So the uh, the current version, uh, the the deluxe is basically everything you need to play Waterloo in one box. Where the expansion includes the maps and maybe some extra stuff, but you need Lavatai de Quatre Bras and Lavatai de Ligny to play it, or is it yeah. Wav? It would be Ligny. Um, so if you have those two games, you can get the expansion. If not, you need the the deluxe one. And I, yeah. that's a, that's a little confusing too, but I maybe I just knew that actually. So and we're we're getting <coughs> that answered in the chat. So I don't I don't see any reason why you couldn't do this. I mean, you can use you get a Quattro first edition and use the rules that came in the box if you want. It should work fine. Uh, but then if you want to use a different rule set, if you want to just focus on one rule set for now, um, just pick one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So with the, so kind of getting back to what we talked about before with, uh, you can either use the rules that come in the box and whether that's the first edition or second mm -hmm. edition uh, rules that might be out there floating around or fifth edition rules, whatever the case might be. Or if it's a case where you, you want to play the game using the premier rules, you could do that too. Um, so with any of them, you can usually find a way to play any of the the games that have been published over the course of the last several decades using whatever rule set you want mm -hmm. you might need to factor in a few changes here or there um but the resources that are at the labatai.us site mm -hmm. have some of the particularities that can sort of retrofit your old 1980s game with updated command mm -hmm. uh instructions for um, the regs and Marie Louise or fifth edition. Yeah. And I noticed that when I was digging stuff up for the two games that I picked up, right. It's like, okay, we can, I could pretty much get the material I need for any lava tie game that's come out in the last 40, whatever it's been years for, uh, 47 years yeah. uh, by my record, at least according to BGG's reckoning, uh, going go. back to the, the first game from 1975, which I looked up, it says BGG says 1975. And as you know, okay. BGG is never wrong. They're never. Oh. The internet's always correct. Yes, exactly. I that's that's what I have found. <laughs> Unlucky Upper Canada. Uh, hilariously, I just bought a game about Lower Canada. So that's postcard the side. game. There you go. Well, and so getting to Jeff's point, um, if you go to the labatai.us site, you'll see people who have done their research and come up with games of lesser battles. Mm -hmm. Um, there's one that, that I, uh, I printed, uh, you know, basically downloaded and, and played, um, which is, uh, you know, a Spanish battle. It was, I don't know, what was it? Uh, Tamanez. Mm -hmm. Um, you've never heard of it before. I've never this, heard of it. this, 
yeah, this guy put together the order of battle. He did all the research, printed out, you know, have everything. And you could just download the PDF of everything, take it to your local, you know, uh, UPS store or, or Office Depot, print the stuff out or make it yourself at home. Um, and there's a whole bunch of others that are out there. So if if Jeff is wants to have, you know, his uh, 1812 game of whatever battle, um, you know, there's probably someone out there who can do it. Um, and there's some some guys who really put a lot of effort into making some really great ones. There's a fellow who did one that's the Battle of Mont Mural, which is in mm -hmm. 1814. Mm -hmm. And it is the artwork and everything else. It's it's top notch and you can download it. Um, he doesn't charge anything for it, but, you know, he just asks hey, if you can, you know, send him a couple of bucks or whatever for his efforts. Um, so there's lots of people that have done that kind of stuff. And so if you, because the system has the ability of covering a wide spectrum of, of combat during that time period, you can have lots of people, um, do their own battles. And you know, a lot of the people that are doing the ones in Spanish are actually the ones that are happening in Spain are actually Spanish, um, fans of the system. Um, so I have a, a great number of my uh, subscribers, um, if they're not here in the U.S. or Canada, there's a bunch of them that are in Spain um, because, you know, they, they, the history was happening there in their own country. So a mm -hmm. lot of the games are, are happening there. So good question from Chad here. Will Clash of Arms be doing any of the Marshall Enterprises title? I had the impression, or maybe I actually heard this, or, or maybe I'm just full of it. Uh, all three have been known to happen that that there is like an agreement between Marshall Enterprises and Clash of Arms that they're not going to step on each other's toes. Right. I don't know all the particulars between their business relationships. Um, I do know that usually they try to make sure that they are not coming out with the same uh, games or working on the same titles mm -hmm. as each other. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, exactly who owns the rights to this or that or whatever else. Um, so uh, I, I, I know that they all get along very collegially, at least from what I've seen. Um, and, uh, and, and the success of either company only helps to magnify the success of the others. Mm -hmm. So by having... Um, keeping this series alive and and adding new um, games to it, um, whatever Marshall is doing, that's that's I uh, hoping to foster what sales at Clash of Arms, um, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So uh, they're not really rivals in the same case. And because Marshall isn't like a game publisher, they're doing this more as a as a fun um, uh, a, a fun and fulfilling activity. Yes, mm -hmm. they're making some money off of it, but they're not, you know, they're not in the business of selling uh, thousands of these games. Um, mm -hmm. And so therefore, um, you know, the, the relationship is is very cordial for, um, with everybody. Boy, you're right. The Montmoral stuff is really well produced graphically, isn't it? You can download oh, yeah. the, entire, the entire thing from Lavatai.us. Yeah, yeah. And that's that. So, and there's other guys that have just put in all kinds of effort to put together some really nice games and some of the vassal modules, um, some of the guys have like updated. So the map might be something from the 1970s or 1980s, but the counters, the guys have redone the artwork and everything mm -hmm. else. The vassal module for our shot is a fella in Spain who did it. And it's just absolutely terrific. It's better than the game I actually own. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to have to take a look. I have yet to even download any of the Labatai modules because, you know, copious free time. But uh, obviously, I'm going to have to fix that. And there's definitely some some smaller things available for... Uh, and, and so is there anywhere else, like a secret location for Vassal modules that we need to know about other than the Vassal website? So there's usually... You can either find them on um, Vassal or you can find them on Limey Yank. So okay. those are the, the other the other secret location. Yeah, that other secret location would be Limey Yank. Um, so if you don't find them there, you'll find them over there. And um, I I know uh, at least from what I saw in a recent post on Consim that the uh, one of the fellows who is a major designer of the uh, Vassal modules 
uh, for, for the Laba Thai series is going to be working on one for Mos Eijin 2. Mm. Um, so that'll be great to see because the one that's up there now is using like a Rick Barber mm -hmm. uh, map, or maybe it's using a map that he did for um, the Grognards uh, game series. So it's, um, it, it's, it covers everything from, I think, Mont Saint-Jean all the way out to Wavre and all of the terrain in between. Um, and so uh, it, and it has a different stylistic look to uh, from what both Linny and uh, Katraba have. Okay. All right, folks. I think we are out of time. Um, so it's it's uh, it's super early for Eric, but it's it's real <laughs> late for me, especially given my current dilapidated condition. So I'd like to thank uh, everybody for stopping by who has stopped by, and I'd like to thank Eric for agreeing to sit down uh, with this time. And and we may uh, we may have a, another conversation with him at some point in the future. But, you know, before we do that, I will have to actually try to play a lot of Thai game. Well, here's the thing. I would be more than happy to walk you through the basics and we could do a little vassal how-to um, game type of thing, you know, with the magic of technology. There you go. Um, that would be a, a, could be a fun little uh, video for, uh, for us to do. That sounds um, great. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that offer as well. First, I got to get over this thing. <laughs> I'm sure what, you what, will. What fun. No, yeah, I'll be fine. I just need a couple more days to, to yeah. sleep sleep it off, drink plenty of fluids, and do the other things that it, it, this is requiring. So uh, once again, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, this has been great with Eric. Thanks to Eric for, uh, for showing up. Um, and uh, we'll see you all again soon. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Gary.